Right then guys, hello and welcome to the latest video. Today is gonna to be a full day of eating on a training day, on an upper day. Um, so you'll have already seen meal one um, and I'll put the macros and everything on screen for every meal. Right now I'm just about to go to Tesco and grab what I usually get like every two, three days. So it's almost like I don't really do like a main shop once a week. I live two minutes away so I'll go every pretty much every morning to be honest and just get odd bits to top up um so i'll show you what i'm getting and then i will run through it when i get back to the flat um but for now just sit back relax make sure you hit the subscribe like everything all of that jazz um and yeah enjoy the video So back from Tesco now, I've got everything that you will have seen me grab anyway, but I'm going to run through sort of why I have them or where they are in my diet. So obviously today is a training day, but there's a few things in here that I will often have on rest days as well. So I'll just run through it. So I, I get diced chicken breast generally every, again, two to three days. I have that in my post-workout meal. That's the only actual time I have chicken, post-workout meal. Um, I get 5% beef mints or steak mints. Um, I have that in one meal on both a training day and a rest day. Um, I've got fruit, so blueberries, raspberries, and pineapple. So blueberries and raspberries I have in my cream of rice. And then pineapple I have in meal one and meal two on a training day and just in meal one on a rest day. I, I have in every meal apart from post-workout, I aim to have some form of fruit or veg just generally to get a wide spectrum of, of micronutrients in, to aid in terms of digestion, to get a decent amount of fiber in. There's no reason really that I don't have them in post-workout other than the fact that I'm trying to get as many carbs in as possible. And in order to do so, having fruit is gonna make that actually harder because it's a, a higher fiber, higher volume food. So post-workout, I'll always have a higher GI, uh, lower volume carb source. So I have like cereal at the minute. Um, it's not a case of like, oh, I don't want to be take, intaking fructose post-workout or anything like that. It's just a case of getting in more carbohydrates, really. Um, speaking of cereal, Frosted Flakes. Now I have cheapo Frosties, uh, but they do the job and I really like them. Um, I don't know how you could complain about them in comparison to Frosties. They're fantastic. And the macros are very, very good. Per 100 grams, 87.8 gram of carbs. So, fantastic cereal. Uh, dark chocolate. 85% so I have that on my cream of rice on both the training day and a rest day 20 grams which is about 10 gram of fat Crumpets easy carbs um, Bagels as well. I have those in the morning as you'll have seen in meal one um, then I've got Some form of fruit juice so at the minute because of my, my carbs are getting a little bit higher They're still not excessively high don't get me wrong but because they're getting a bit higher I thought what I'll do is I'll start adding in a fruit juice um, I used to do it Back in last off season, when I was on like 850 carbs, I'd always have orange juice in the morning. So at the minute what I'm doing is I'm getting like a naked smoothie or like an innocent fruit juice, um, which are generally full of those different fruit. Um, majority of them are pretty much 10 grams of, of carbs per 100 gram, uh, 100 mil of, of fluid. So I'll have 25 carbs, so 250 mil, which is a tall glass. That's exactly what you'll have seen in my meal one this morning. Um, that was a naked smooth, like a mango one. It's actually really nice. And then eggs. And don't judge me for getting the, the cheap eggs, please. I'll put them back in there. So that is what I will do. You'll have seen, I think it was like 20 quid. Um, that is what I'll do every two to three days. I will go and grab this kind of amount of food. It'll cost me around 20 quid. Me and Shannon rarely do a big shop. If we do, it's going to be similar to this, but maybe a few more things and closer to maybe 30 quid maximum. Uh, we go, like I say, every two, three days. I would suggest that I spend close to maybe 80-ish quid on food a week, which isn't that much. Um, but I did have a question yesterday on my Instagram. Someone was asking about, as a student, that they were struggling with money, how, how to sort of manage that and how to live, I guess, without sort of spending a lot of income if you've not got a, a massive disposable income. Well, don't get me wrong, obviously I haven't, but my disposable income is much better than it was when I was like first year at uni. Um, but I basically just said to them, I, I've experienced that I used to have to go into Morrison's with my phone on a calculator and, and start on 20 quid and basically um, deduct everything that I was buying and make sure that it didn't go over 20 quid. 
thinking about that now is, is insane. I used to get like a full food shop for 20 quid and I don't really know how, um, but I did for like a week. Um, so you can do it if you just literally, I, I remember I used to eat a lot of oats, used to eat a lot of just uh, plain rice. Um, you know, I wasn't getting sesame seed bagels back then. I just couldn't afford it. I wasn't as posh as I am now with my sesame seed bagels. So yeah, you can live like that um, easily and still pursue your, your fitness goals and still you know pursue bodybuilding if you want to, 100%. Uh, but yeah, that is a standard two to three days shop. Um, now I've got some more work to do, so I'll catch up with you all for the next meal. So, meal two is here and we've got beef mince and salad with some sour cream and salsa cream of rice that i made earlier it's the cherry bakewell jp one um, i didn't actually show you me making that or the um my pre-workout cream of rice so i made that with my first meal and um, just so it's done and out of the way in the morning and then some more fruit which is pineapple again um so yeah again all the, uh, the macros will be on the screen. This meal is actually really, really good. It digests really well. I know it's three different bowls and it looks like a lot, uh, but it's not actually that much. Um, so this is generally a little bit of a break from work. So I work in the morning from pretty much like 6 a.m. till about nine when I um, then have meal one. Then the second meal now is about two hours later, so about 11. And then my third meal is again about just over two hours later, about one, and then I go and train. Um, so that meal timing is a little bit closer than I would like, but it's working really well at the minute. My digestion's in a good spot. I'm able to really smash on with work and have sort of some real good structured time to, to really get on with a lot of work um, in between those those time frames. Um, then I obviously have my intro workout and then I have my post workout, which is actually my final meal because it's a, my, my biggest meal um, and it's only a few hours before I go to bed. Um, so the days fly by, it's crazy. Um, how quick they go and, and usually I would like to spread meals out a little bit more but if I do that I'm only going to end up having like three meals if you don't include intro if you do then four whereas I'd much rather have five meals including intro if not six um, and in the future when I do get on more food I think I'll likely have to add a sixth which is here um, and that'll be early early morning so pretty much when I get up um, and I'm not a massive fan of eating as soon as I wake up I can do it easily um, but I quite like just having a black coffee and smashing on with work but if I do have to um, then I will so I'm gonna eat this now then get on with some more work and then I'll catch up with you when I'm having my pre-workout meal So the pre-workout meal, you've just seen me create. Um, like I said earlier, I made the cream of rice in the morning because I much prefer it cold. Um, so I've got cream of rice, everything will be on the screen. I'll put it up here because there's a, a nice space for it. And then a couple of crumpets as well. So while I was making that, what I always do while I'm making that is I will make my intra and my pre-workout. So at the minute, my pre-workout is expansion and ignition. These two paired. Um, so the expansion is the pump product from CMP and that's in red apple flavour and then the ignition is the stim pre-workout and that's in fruit punch. So on a upper day I will have both, on a lower day I don't have the pump, I don't feel like I need the pump on a lower day, I just have the stim on the lower day. Um, I train at about 2 o'clock so I'm happy to have it uh, have a stim pre-workout. For people who train later, I would recommend just the pump. Um, they both taste really good on their own, taste great together as well. To be fair, all the flavours that I've had taste taste great, and I'm not just saying that, I'm being honest. Um, and then my intra workout, so the EAA that I'm using is the Loaded EAA by CMP um, in grape flavour, and again, really, really nice. Um, so I have 10 grams of that, which gets me three grams of leucine. Um, along with that, I will have creatine, taurine, electrolytes, 
and I also have highly branched cyclic dextrin. So on a upper body day, because the session generally isn't as fatiguing, I don't burn as many calories as I would on a lower body session. I only have 25 grams of um, carbohydrates in there. So HBCD only 25 grams in here. Whereas on a lower day, I have 50 grams. So the difference between my food on a lower day and an upper day is simply just an extra 50 carbs, so an extra 200 calories on a lower day. Uh, 25 grams of that comes through the uh, intro workout and then 25 grams of it comes through post-workout so I have an extra 30 grams of cereal in post-workout uh, and that's just like I say due to the fact that I'm going to be burning more calories in a lower session than an upper session so it's just from an energy balance perspective so I'm going to get this in and then it's time to head to the gym and train Right then guys, so it's actually a couple of days later now and obviously I'll have had my post-workout meal by now. So I'm going to show you what it was. So it was 200 grams of chicken, 200 grams of Frosties, 200 milliliters of milk and also two crumpets with 20 grams of jam on each. So the macros for that meal I'll put on the screen um, and I just didn't film anything after that because I was just battered after the session. I wanted to chill out and then go to bed. So I thought I would do an outro today and basically just run through some of my my uh, reasonings behind sort of how I set my my day up with food. Why am I eating the specific foods that I'm eating at the specific times, etc. So I thought I would just run through it in a, a little bit of detail. So I am in a, a slight caloric surplus now. So obviously after competing, I was you know 166 pounds was my my leanest. I'm now up at 184 pounds. So I'm 18 pounds up from my, my leanest weight, um, which is good. It's kind of where I wanted to be really about now um, and just be gradually pushing up now. It's not a case of body weight has to go up. It's more so a case of when I feel like I can get away with consuming a little bit more food and with how training's going, you know, I can probably get away with just bumping it up here and there than I will do. So that's how I've got to the, the overall calories that I'm on now. Um, I was on... I can't remember the exact numbers um, at the end of at the end of prep, but I know I had refeed days. But forget refeed days. Normal days, I was on I think about mid two thousands 
on a training day and sort of mid to low 2000s on a rest day if i'm not mistaken so obviously i've pushed that right up now to where we're at on a, a an upper day which i will put uh, the totals on the screen over here um so the totals there and on a um lower day i have an extra 50 carb so rather than 230 650 it's 230 650 50 on a, on a lower day like i said earlier just due to the, the difference in energy balance so when it comes to protein i'm aiming for um 1.5 grams per pound of lean tissue so if i say that 166 pounds because that was my leanest body weight if i class that as my sort of lean body mass um then 1.5 grams per pound of lean body mass would be 250 grams i'm not far off that i'm at 230 grams right now i'm working up very slowly as and when i can i'll just bump it up a little bit uh, i don't want to shoot it right up to 250 grams plus when throughout prep it was on some days you know 200 180 on refeed days even you know i believe it I believe 180 was the lowest it went on a refeed day um i don't want to bump it right up to the point where i'm consuming you know let's say another third of the protein that i was on top it's just going to play havoc with with digestion if i'm not sort of tapering that up slowly so that's why i'm doing that um and i'm aiming to obviously spread that out throughout the day you'll see that my post-workout meal has got quite a lot of protein in it that is to obviously hit my overall targets but also with the fact that post-workout or around the training window our body's going to be in the best position to uptake nutrients so i can almost get away with having a little bit more protein ideally i'd be able to have another meal as a post post workout meal but at the minute with the time that i'm training and the time that i'm going to bed it just doesn't make sense to have another meal i want to make sure that i'm going to bed with having sort of at least an hour to two hours without consuming any food so that my digestive system is not having to work too much when i'm trying to get to sleep and be asleep throughout the night i don't want to be having a, an elevated heart rate so I, I might look at having a meal first thing in the morning at some point in the future when i need to keep pushing my food further because at the minute with work and everything i don't eat until about 9 a.m as i spoke about earlier so i could definitely get away with with adding one in at about half six eight in the morning when when i am up um well, well i'm already up for a little while by then so i could easily do that and i will probably have to in the future um so it's obviously quite high carb um it has been higher in the past and it will be higher in the future um but it is quite high carb and that's obviously to try and provide as much energy as possible and as much glycogen to the muscles as possible for training um, and you know, looking into um a lot of the, the research it, it's going to show us that there's more of a benefit to having a higher carb diet versus a higher fat diet when it comes to performance so that's why I, I opt for a higher carb diet and a lot of those carbohydrates are based around training due to the fact that one I want to fuel into the session so provide myself a good amount of energy going into the session through carbohydrates a little bit of fats to slow down that uptake throughout the session and then um, post-workout generally when we're going to be in the best position to uptake nutrients because of the fact that we have trained um, and we're in a position where we are depleted and also our um, basically our, our glycogen receptors our GLUT4 receptors um, are in a position to uptake more carbohydrates so you can see I have 300 gram of carbs post-workout but it actually sits really well um, and I, I feel like I really benefit from that and I'd recommend that to anyone to base a lot of your carbohydrates around the training window go into the session with a little bit more um, simple carbohydrates or complex carbohydrates so um, higher GI basically uh, sorry lower GI slower digesting post-workout have a higher GI source which is faster digesting carbohydrates um, when it comes to nutrient timing I'm aiming to spread my meals out by at least sort of two to four hours every meal throughout the morning they're quite close together so they're closer to that two hour mark um, because I'm trying to get plenty of food in prior to training um, and then I obviously have the intro workout and the post workout and then like I say I could fit another meal in but it wouldn't really be useful generally my post workout meal is around between sort of 7 and 8 p.m depending on how long the session ends up being and then I'm in bed by generally quarter past nine to half past nine so i ideally have at least like an hour and a half to two hours before going to bed from that final meal um and for me to try and add another meal in just wouldn't be realistic so at the minute i only have four meals five if you include the intro which i do um and obviously i'm trying to spread out protein across all of those um and and make sure that i'm maximizing muscle protein synthesis throughout the day um 
and then yeah obviously the, the only other comment was that final meal um, and making sure that I'm not eating it too late um, so I think that's something that when people are in a gaining phase they think oh I have to eat all the time and they'll go to bed on like a, a really full stomach because they've eaten a thousand calorie meal half an hour before it's like yeah great you're getting a lot of food in but realistically you'd probably be better off trying to split that let's say an extra 250 calories into four meals versus adding a, another a fifth meal in to try and get that extra thousand calories in um and then you're giving yourself a little bit of time um to to obviously digest that food before going to bed and it also won't skew your morning weigh-ins too much i think sometimes people will panic that they've they've weighed in heavy one night uh, one morning and it's because they ate late the night before so if you try and sort of steer away from that a little bit it probably won't play around with the data too much so yeah, that's pretty much everything covered. So if anyone's got any questions on anything, please just ask. Um, obviously, don't just eat what I eat or don't follow it. it. You know, if you're unsure on you know what you want to be eating or how much you want to be eating, um, feel free to ask me any questions. Um, I will do one on a non-training day at some point. I doubt I'll do one on a lower day because it's just a bit more intro and a bit more serial. Everything else is the exact same. Um, I eat the same because I enjoy it. By the way, it's, it's, I, it's not that I have an unhealthy relationship with food. I enjoy the, the the food that I eat, all the meals that I eat. I I like them, and I like the routine of eating the same day to day. Um, it makes me feel good. It makes me train well. It makes me recover well. It reduces my chances of of um, sort of having decisions to make it reduces my decision making of oh what do i fancy and i hate that it saves me time um it reduces my chances of getting ill just because i'm eating the same and i know i feel good on it um yeah i don't need to reel off any more benefits of eating the same um and you know if, if you can do that and if if you can eat foods that you enjoy and, and stick to it consistently then there's no negative sort of I think people have negative connotations around eating the same, like, oh, that's not, that can't be healthy. But that's just because they don't have the willpower of eating the same, generally. So, yeah, I'll leave it there. Um, so, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do like and subscribe. That would be much appreciated. And I will catch you all in the next one.